In this video, I'll be showing you the best way that I use to colour grade images and I'll also be showing you four alternatives. Hey guys and welcome to the video, my name is Clinton Lofthouse and you're tuned into photomanipulation.com. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel, we specialise in photo manipulation, digital art and advanced Photoshop techniques. If that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out new videos Monday to Friday. It's free, it's easy and it really supports the channel. Let's roll the video and enjoy. Before we start, um, if you do like the colour grading, uh, I do cover this and more things like dodge and burn and styling uh, in my course Hollywood Processing and there is a link to that underneath the video. So let's get on with the tutorial. So I am going to show you how to colour grade your images or how I colour my, grade my images and I'm also going to show you all the other ways you can colour grade your images which I don't use. <laughs> Um, I kind of found early on the one that worked for me and I feel that like it gives the best effects uh, colour grade wise but let's go through all the other versions first and then we'll get to my colour grading technique at the end of the tutorial. So first off let's get down to the one what's probably the easiest but doesn't give the best effect and that is just to use a photo filter. So if you go up to the adjustment panel here this little camera icon with the circle, this is a photo filter. So if you click on that, it should add a photo filter adjustment to your layer panel and the photo filter dialog box pops up. So here you have color and density and you have some presets here as well. So this is the color. So say if you wanted your image to have a cool tone, you could click on the blue here click OK and then with the density you can make that colour stronger or weaker. So we wouldn't want to go too far so let's colour it to somewhere around 46% and that would be it. So you've got some colour in there, you've made the image cooler but it's not very um, detailed, there's not a lot of control, you're basically just putting a colour on the top and then lowering the opacity and that is a photo filter. And I. I don't use photo filter for colour grading but I do use it when I'm creating composites and I all I do is when I start bringing in all the elements in together all my separate elements I will put a photo filter at the top of the layers panel just so they've all got a little bit of a similar tone I don't put it full strength but it just blends in the tones a little bit better and then I will do my final colour grade later and I've also seen Eric Almas do this. So if Eric Almas does this, then you can do it too. So let's move on to number two. So let's just get rid of this. And number two is the channel mixer. So the channel mixer is this icon here. And as you can tell, we're using all these um, color grading tools, non-destructive by using um, adjustment layers. So the channel mixer is this one here, which is three different circles kind of intertwined. So let's click that. Our channel mixer will appear in the layers panel above your image and the properties box will appear. So what you can do here is you can go into any of the RGB uh, channels and color accordingly. So we go into the red channel. We can now change the, uh, all the different colors of that channel. Uh, and I'm going to say I never use this to colour grade my images, but some people do and it works for them. Um, I find you can get quite unique results if you try using to colour this, but actually knowing what uh, colour you want and how to get there using this is a very difficult as we're changing the colours in different colour channels and just saying that absolutely, that makes it sound difficult anyway. <laughs> it's difficult to say. So we can go into the green channel and we can change the different um, tones of the green channel by if you move blue to the left it goes purple, if you move it to the um, right it goes green. So you can get some quite weird uh, colour, um, I don't know what you'd call it, like science fiction -y colours, kind of fantasy colours. Uh, I know some people what do get these some create images with these colour schemes what look pretty good but for me it's just not my, my style and I just don't know what colour I'm going to get when I'm sliding these around. 
So you can colour grade using this, but I would kind of go against using it and use something where you've got more control, you know what's going to happen, and it's just easier to use. So let's move on to the third way you can colour grade your images. So the next way you can do it is by using colour balance. So again, colour balance is this scales here. You can click on that, it will appear in your layers panel, and then you can go to the properties box here and color grade your image. So in the tone box, you have shadows, midtones, and highlights. So this is easier to use than the channel mixer and you can kind of specify in which kind of area you want the color to be. So if you want to color this image a more cooler tone, you could go to your midtones and you can bring some cyan in there. And then that looks a little bit too cyan. You want to pump it up with a bit of blue to get that coolness and then you can move the, uh, the blue in there as well. So that's in the mid-tones. But then maybe you want some, in the highlights, you've got these lights here, so maybe you want to put some orange in. So um, what makes orange? Well, red and yellow, so you can go, right, let's bring some little bit of red in there. That's a little bit too red, so now let's bring some yellow into there. And we've got this orange. So we've got this mixture of cool mid-tones and then orange highlights. So if we just click that off, and on as you can see there we've color graded it and we've done that by targeting the different tones of the image again you could always go back in there and go to the shadows and say right it's it looks a little bit too warm so i want to pump some blue into the shadows and you can pump a little bit more blue in there and again you're getting this very uh stylized color grade again not my style but some people do like this kind of color grade. So let's get rid of the color balance and let's move on to, again, a very easy one, but one I don't use a lot, and this is color lookup. So color lookup is this little grid here in your adjustments panel. So you can click on that. And what it does is it's basically applying the looks to your image. So they're already pre-made looks and you can download LUTs online, there's people selling LUTs. What all you do is you choose one and it, upla it uploads that color grade or that color scheme to your image. So we go here and we get all these ones what Photoshop has loaded into it. So if we went for film stock, you can click on that and it applies that to your image. Again, a lot of these are uh, not my style, quite over the top. I mean, you can lower the opacity like so, and just gently add it in. But again, I like to control my own um, color. I like to have more control of it. I like, to, I like it to be manual. I like to play around and do it. I don't want to just put a color scheme on top of it, what someone else has created, and then blend it in. It's not, not my style. If you want to do that, you can do. So let's just add one more different um, look onto this. So let's go for Moonlight. There you go. That's the moonlight LUT of the um, color lookup. Again, for some images this might work. For composites you could use this if you want in one of those muted tones for maybe an evening image. But as a color grade overall, it's not for me. It is very easy to use. So if you don't know how to use the more advanced tools, you can try this. But I would say to get and learn the more advanced ways to color because you've got way more control. So as, as we move along, we are now getting to my two of my favorite uh, tools to use for color grading, and that is Selective Color and a Gradient Map. So let's go on to Selective Color first. So Selective Color is this little box here with the uh, triangles, different colored triangles in it. We'll click on that. And what we have in the properties box of Selective Color is again, you can target the color ranges of all these different colors. So you've got the tones with white, neutrals and blacks, and then you have the different colors as well. I tend to use this only on the mid-tones, the highlights and the darks, uh, but you can go into the reds as well and change the colors like so. So that's if you wanted to change the color of the reds. But again, uh, this is for my new adjustments. I would kind of go more for a uh, global coloring of the different tones. So let's go to mid-tones and this works a little bit like the color balance from earlier on. So we've got the mid-tones now. So again, if we wanted to maybe make this image warmer, we could bring some yellows into the image and we could maybe bring some reds into the image a little bit. 
like so. That's a little bit magenta. Um, again, it, it's quite over the top and it's not as easy to uh, go along with uh, when you're trying to get a certain colour. You've got to kind of mix the colours together and know your colour um, very, very well. You've got the blacks here so you can add more contrast, add more black to the image and you can also pull it to the left and take some of that contrast out. So we have quite a contrasty colour there so we can just fade those colours in a little bit better. So not a bad colour grade. But it is a little bit more complicated. Uh, but I, I use selective colour in my colour grade but I do not use it like this. But we will get to that after we have gone into the gradient map. So, like I said, the next tool to use to colour grade is a gradient map. And this is my favourite tool to colour grade with. So the gradient map here is this little square here with the gradient in. Click on it and it will bring up the properties box. So let's start off with a black to white gradient. So if you click on the gradient here, it brings up the gradient editor. Click on black to white and press OK. So we want to start off like this. And then... What we want to do is we want to add colours to this gradient, so if you click on here, this is the gradient, uh, so the tones from black to white in your image. So what you can do is you can click on these little boxes and add a colour to this um, colour stop. So let's double click and it brings up the colour picker. So let's say we want a cool image, so let's, because we're choosing a colour for the, the blacks, let's choose a very dark blue. So you won't even hardly tell that it's blue. So there you go. Let's click OK. And then we can choose a colour for the lights. Well, I like to keep my lights white. It's my preference. You don't have to. You can put some other colours in there if you want. But I like to keep it white. But then we go... And then that looks a bit of a simple colour scheme, doesn't it? It's like... It's not very good. So how do we add more colour to this? Well, if you want to add some colour to the midtones, all you have to do is click underneath here and you create another colour stop, another point where you can add colour. So, because this is in the middle, this is going to be the mid-tone. So let's double click this box and let's choose a kind of mid-tone blue. So we can pull, click it there. Let's make it a little bit more blue by pulling this down. So let's go for this kind of blue. Now we've got a nice, nice blue there. Let's click OK. And you can do this as many times as you want. If you wanted a different colour at this point in your tone, your tonal gradient, you could click and make another box and put a colour in. But for now, I like to, I basically just kind of use the darks, midtones, and whites uh, to add colour in. So let's click OK. Now this is very strong, it's very over the top. So what we want to do is lower the opacitor right to the bottom and then bring it in bit by bit gradually. Subtle is always the best way to go. So let's bring it up a little bit. So. So let's, let's go to 35%. So we're going for a cooler image. So we've got a nice cooler image there. But this is not where I would finish with my color grade. So gradient map is the best way to color grade that, but it's even better if you mix it with selective color. So this is where my selective color uh, comes into play. So what I want to do is I want to use selective color to add some colour into the shadows. Now why do I do this? Well if you ever look at painters of old, master painters, look at their paintings, when you look very closely their blacks are never completely black. They have, they have colour in them, it can be a shade of colour and this is because when painters mix black it's a mixture of all the different colours so you get a, a little bit of a different colour in your black, a, a, a coloured black. So it's never just jet black. So if we add this to our blacks in an image, it gives us that painterly colour grade feel which you get in cinema and you get in very fine art images and you just it just gives you an overall better colour grade to an image. So let's go to selective colour, let's click that and we're going to use this in conjunction with our gradient map. So we want to go up to the colours and we want to slick, uh, select sorry, the uh, blacks and then we can add some colour into our shadows like I tend to like to add a little bit of red in so if I just move this to the left it brings a little bit of red in there like so again subtle is always key so let's turn that off and on 
And as you can see already, that color grade is looking a lot, a lot better. That's without color in the shadows and that's with color in the shadows. So again, we've got a completely different uh, feel to the image before the image was quite orange. It had a very summery feel. Now it has like a gritty kind of stylized feel like you would see from a, in a documentary movie maybe. So let me just hold down shift, select both of these. Let's put them in a, into a group. Let's just call this color grade and let's just switch this off and on. So we've taken this very orange summery California feel image to this very gritty um, darker stylized documentary feel type of image and we've done that just by color grading. So just to kind of nail this, uh, this uh, point in I'm going to show you a another image with my color grading technique on it which is gradient map and selective color together. So as you can see this is the image as it was before and this is the image after the color grade. As you can see just again you've got that real kind of painterly color grade to it and it just looks a lot better in my opinion anyway. Everyone's preference is the difference but in my opinion the color grade really adds something to this image. So let's just crop out the color graded part and let's just jump into this and again just add a little bit of a color grade to this image. So again we want to go up to the gradient map. Let's start on a good um, beginning and let's just get this from black to white first so it, it hasn't got that crazy green on because it can be distracting. And then let's double click on the gradient. So I want this image to have, because it's a cowboy image, I want it to have a classic feel to it. And for me, um, that kind of classic feel would be like maybe a, a brownish color grade with a little bit of blue into the shadows. And that for me feels like a kind of aged painting or sometimes in cinema you get that uh, very muted uh, bluish color grade. So what we want to do is let's create our midpoint, our midtone point here. And let's now go to our darks and let's go for, we want a very dark brown. So let's go for a quite saturated dark brown. So let's go here. So we're choosing that for our darks, for our shadows. Let's press OK. Now let's get rid of this green. And let's again move this down the gradient, the color gradient. And let's go for a brown somewhere around here. Let's make it a little bit desaturated. And as you can see, it's showing you the effects of this color in your image in real time. So anywhere you click, you can see the changes on your image. So let's go here for this kind of, let's actually just saturate a little bit more, click here. Let's press OK. And as I said before, I like to keep my lights white. Let's press OK. And then let's hide this. And let's lower the opacity of this brown right down and then just gradually bring it in somewhere like here. So 45% works for me. As you can see, it's it's all right. It feels like it's missing something and that something it's missing is a little bit of color in the blacks. So let's go to selective color. It's already set to blacks. Let's add a little bit of blue into these shadows like so. So we've got the blue there. As you can see, it's kind of taken some of that brown off. So what we can do, because we're working non-destructive, go back to our gradient map and just pump those browns up a little bit so maybe 61 60 let's just create a group from this so let's hold down shift let's select both group from layers let's color grade and let's turn that off and on so that's without the color grade looks all right very blue could, could work for some people and that's with the color grade. See, look how epic that kind of looks like. Very cinematic and uh, very classic. It gives it a classic feel. For me, that color grade just adds something to that image, especially a cowboy image as well. So again, you want to look at the subject of what you add in the color grade to. If, if this was a sci-fi image, the colors of brown and uh, blue to get this kind of faded color grade, this painterly color grade wouldn't work. You might want to add some reds in or maybe some pinks or something like that. Uh, but as you can see, it's a very powerful way to add colour to your images, to colour grade an image. And it's very controllable and you've got a lot more control than some of the other um, 
ways I showed you to color grade and it's easier to use as well. So thanks a lot guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said before, I go over color, like color grading and dodge and burn and loads of other things like that in my Hollywood processing course, which is available from the link below this video. Well, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it of value. If you did, it would be amazing if you could like, comment and subscribe. You could even share this video with someone you feel will benefit from it. It helps our channel a lot to get seen and we appreciate it each and every time you do. You guys are awesome. We love the interaction. So thanks again. We truly are grateful. Thanks guys and I will see you next time.